Yo. Morning. Uh, it is day. I don't know, like six months in of uh, homelessness. Uh, I went this morning uh, to the interview. So last time we left off, I was at my storage locker, and then I drove about an hour to a rest stop. Uh, just above Fairlawn to sleep. I didn't have a lot of options. I could have drove further away, uh, past where I needed to go, <clears throat> and slept at a Walmart that I slept at one time when I wanted to go to the thrift stores in the morning. But yeah, I went there. I was early. I'm always early. You always want to be somewhere 15 minutes early. It's punctuality. It's good to be there early, you know. A lot of issues, but I'm pretty on time, especially, you know, if I don't know where I'm going, I like to go there early. So I went there, uh, I got there a little bit early, I thought maybe there was a, there was a thrift store that was right down the street from it, but it's closed, I guess, because I have been to that area before. So, couldn't go there, I went and, when I pulled up, it was like, on the right, there was like a giant warehouse, and on the left, there was like a smaller office building type thing with a couple trucks. So I just kind of parked over there, waited about 15 after. I was like, uh, hey, I'm outside. I'm not too sure where I should be. And I didn't get a hold of anyone, so I just walked up to the door. And then, like, an old lady came up at the same time and was like, hi, can I help you? I'm like, uh, I was here for an interview as I'm on the phone with this guy. So I'm, like, on the phone with someone, and this lady's in front of me. I'm just trying to be, you know, I hate to be rude to anyone, so it just bothers me that I'm like... I'm like, yeah, to talking to the guy on the phone, but also trying not to ignore the lady. And eventually they're like, yeah, just go over there and meet you over there. I'm like, okay, cool. So I, I go over there, <clears throat> pull over to the other side of the warehouse, go in. The guy, super cool, possibly one of the easiest interviews I've ever done. Just go in, he's just like, yeah, yeah just put on this little, you know, high-vis uh, visitor's vest, you know, because it's a warehouse, forklifts going around and everything. And uh, he just shows me like a few of the different sanitation things I'm gonna need to do, and it's a nighttime job, so I don't really mind. It would be better to be off during, you know, to be able to sleep at night because it is awkward to sleep during the day. But I can work around it. I can figure. I can figure life out. Yeah, I'd figure it out. But either way. Super easy interview. He's specifically he's like, yeah, there's a there's a freezer and. Like, there's a freezer. Uh, it's in the distance somewhere. I can't actually see it. He's like, there's a freezer, but the first shift guy likes to focus on the freezer, so you don't have to worry about it. So I'm like, oh, cool. So I don't have to go into the freezing cold freezer to clean things. I'm kind of worried that there won't be enough stuff for me to do. Because I actually, like, if I'm at work somewhere, I want to stay busy all day. I want to have things for me to do throughout the day, just working on different things, go different places, whatever. You know what I mean? I don't want to be at work and be like all right dude i got eight hours to go and i probably only have three and a half hours worth of stuff to do let's like really pace that out like i, I don't enjoy that that really sucks i hate if i have to go i don't want to go you know kill myself fast but i also don't want to like just be lounging around all day it's very boring to me i like to be working and you know makes the day go faster like if you're busy all day your day just goes faster and it's just you're not focusing on the time as much so if I can find something like that it'd be nice but the interview went really good uh, the guy was like I was like hey I have my medical card I don't know that it disqualifies me and he's like can you can you fake a test I'm like uh, I probably could I've never actually have had to but I probably could <clears throat> And he's just like, ah, oh, well, you know, maybe I'll, I'll talk to him and see and just tell him, like, hey, you got your card and just to wave it. And I'm like, cool, because you know, I don't do anything. I got my medical card, uh, took town on ibuprofen, you know, for headaches and uh, tooth issues. So, yeah, I don't, I don't do anything. But I do need, you know, my medical stuff to uh, to sleep or I just have constant nightmares. It's It's really sucks. Like even if it even if that's all I the only benefit that I got from it 
is that I didn't remember the <clears throat> really toxic nightmares that I have. Uh, it'd be worth using. <clears throat> so it'd be hard to not not use that. But yeah, so that interview went really good. Uh, I'm out in Canton now. So like I left uh, the rest area and then I drove for like another 30-ish miles or so to where I needed to do my interview. And then I thought it went good. Like for me, I'm terrible in interviews. I'm always like real nervous and dodgy, but in a weird way, I guess because I just don't really care anymore. I'm kind of like more laid back and I do still have my goal and the thing that I want to hit. So I just <clears throat> have to focus on that, you know, focus on the goal. And like I said, I thought it went really good. So. After I left, obviously I went to thrift stores, you know, you gotta check it out. Like, if you don't go, like, for all you know, there could be a, uh, oh, what's his name? Oh, yeah, there could be a Banksy painting. I don't even check art. But my point is, there could be a Banksy painting at the Goodwill. Period. There could be a Banksy painting at the Goodwill. And if you don't go in, and you don't check, and you don't look, and you don't hunt, you would never know that, you know, a Banksy worth a half million dollars, two million dollars, was found at a Goodwill. Like, things like this do happen. I've known people to hit on art before for two thousand, four thousand dollars. I've never really messed with art too much, but people do. So again, it's like, if you don't go in and you don't look, you're never even going to find anything. Like, I went into the first store... It was, yeah, it was definitely the first store because I've already changed. Uh, I went into the first store and looked around. Wasn't really anything. Dude, I don't know what's up with these ones up here. Like, they have, like, no toys. It's just barren. It's like they're not even putting anything out. It's just all junk for the most part. So, I looked around real quick. Didn't really see anything. Uh, I seen another at this thrift store. I'm on a different one now. Another... Original research, Overland research. My memory's terrible, but I seen another one of those hats. It was in there. It was like four bucks, but don't need it. Don't want it. But at the first thrift store I went to, uh, I just kind of like glanced through jeans. I'm like, oh, let me just check out jeans because I'm curious. You know, I've found most of my true religion jeans. That's a big crow. I found most of my true religion jeans. Uh, in the Canton area. It's where they individually price stuff. Most of them have been like 10 bucks. So I found a True Religion pair of jeans. And they were size 31. And keep in mind. It, maybe a year. Well not a year. Uh, many years ago. When I bought new jeans. I think I was having to buy 42 or 44 jeans. So. I was a big guy. You know like 3 something. Like 305 or something. At my biggest I guess. And now I'm probably closer to like 210, 220 maybe. So I'm like, there's no way that these will fit if they're 31. Because I think the smallest I've crammed into is like a 32 or a 34. You know, it, it varies depending on sizes. That's another thing too is you just can't trust sizes. Like something will be like, oh, I'm size, uh, I think I, I think I got a true wooden pair of jeans like 34. 36 and they're stretchy these are also stretchy but that pair whoever wore them was as big as I was at like my biggest like they're massive like I didn't think they were really gonna be that big like I'd have to wear you know some basketball shorts and stuff under them. I have basketball shorts under these they're pretty tight I would rate them as a uh, dick hugger jeans I'll give you a look here in a second but yeah I'd rate them as you know dick hugger jeans but I found these for nine bucks, True Religion, size 31, and I was like, oh, they're not going to fit, so I go in there, I take off my, my jeans, my boots, uh, my basketball shorts, because I'm like, they're not going to fit, I definitely got to take the basketball shorts layer off, because usually, if I have work jeans, they're a lot bigger, I'll just get the Lee uh, Modern Series, the extreme stretchy ones, and I think these are like 38 or 40, so you got to wear like something under them. At one point, I was wearing the basket boxers, then basketball shorts, then sweatpants, then the jeans. But uh, yeah, so I took everything off, and they fit. I was kind of surprised they're not 
real tight, but they're also not loose. You know what I mean? But uh, after I went out to the store, after I went outside, I went in and just changed, put them on. Then I put on my Rocky boots that I got not that long ago, just because I thought they kind of nice and matchy matchy. And that's another thing, like, uh, if anyone ever seen me, if you pretty much ever seen me, unless I was in my, unless I just got off of work or something, and I was in, like, a paint-stained shirt and everything else, you would never, ever mistake me for a homeless person. Because, again, I've just kind of refined my uh, taste, and I have so much time that I can just run around and hit thrift stores. And the year I spent just hanging clothes at Goodwill kind of just like trained me, especially because I was doing it in a really rich area. It just really trained me into knowing what to look for, what I want in things, and what I'm willing to pay for things. Like these these boots, uh, Rocky, American made boots. I think I looked these up, they're like 209 or 290. They're pretty nice. These were like almost new. I think someone lightly wore them. I didn't have any. Well, I had steel toe boots, but they weren't that nice. So I paid ten bucks for these. You know. And the the jacket. Well, this is something else I kind of like to address. I feel like you know running around as a man, like either you have taste or you don't. Like some people put in no effort whatsoever. I'm a man that has too much time on his hands, so I put in a lot of time into taste and to look like uh, like the male version of a snack. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like a delicious, you know, cinnamon roll or something. I love cinnamon rolls. Something like that. Or some peanut butter fudge. Something absolutely sweet and delicious. I put in a lot of time and effort as far as my outfits and just buying them and finding the things that I want. As far as outfits, I usually just like whatever t-shirt I got. I like different jackets. I switch up jackets a lot. I switch up hats here and there, depending on the weather. I have a lot of hats just like this, but different colors. This one's Timberland. This is like a real legit work hat. But uh, I have like just kind of dressy ones. But yeah, I like to just try and run around looking like a snack, you know. I don't want to look like a homeless man. When people see me, I want them to, you know, probably, you know, want to see what's up. <laughs> want to holler at me type thing but yeah I, I'll give y'all a look you know just cause I'm you know I, I am self conscious but I I I think I look good I think I do well for myself you know in a fucking like $500 outfit with these expensive handmade boots true religion jeans I got a roebuck jacket on which I you know from Sears before that went out of business like this jacket's older than me you know what I mean I got my Ray-Bans on. These are prescription. I, you know, I haven't had insurance in many years, but this prescription's like four years out of date. But uh, I look at screens a lot, so I really do need these glasses. These are my legit glasses. This is like the only thing insurance ever bought me. I paid 25 bucks for these. It's like the only thing insurance ever did for me, realistically. But yeah, I'll give you all a quick preview. Let me see what I look like. See if it looks terrible. Ah. Because I'm such a show off. No BP. No BP. You know. With the uh, with the dick huggers on and the handmade boots. Yes, sir. I got issues. I just have uh, I have so much time on my hands. Like when I have an apartment or a place to be, all I want to do is play video games. Wake up, video games, video games, video games. I don't want to leave the house. I don't want to have social interaction. I don't want to go outside. I don't want to see nobody. I just want to hang out with like me and my dog. And if I had friends, I'd just hang out with my close friends. But I don't need to go outside. I don't need to see nobody. I just want to play video games, World of Warcraft, uh, Apex, whatever. But when I'm stuck outside, you know, off and on over the last five years, you know, 
I'm stuck outside off and on over the last five years, homeless in my car. You can't really just sit in the same parking lot all day in the same spot. Like, I sit in my car a lot, but you would get blood clots. Like, you would have issues, you know what I mean? Like, there would be problems for you. So you really shouldn't do that. And, you know, the police would harass you. Like, why are you here all the time? So I just avoid that by just going places. Like, realistically, running around to thrift stores if you map it out. A lot of the times, thrift stores, not around here as much, but in South Carolina, they'd be, like, uh, 10, 10 minutes away. Like, I could hit 20 thrift stores in an eight-hour period. Because, again, I know what I'm looking for. But even more so now, like, uh, that was years ago. And now, like, I'm just on it. Like, I'm so on it. I know what I'm looking for. I'm just scanning. All I do for the most part is just scan. Like, uh, I don't like to go through clothes, but if I do go through clothes, uh, all I'm looking for is name brands. Like, it's the only thing I'm worried about when I'm looking at clothes. When I'm looking at toys or anything else, I'm just looking for things that stand out to me. Like, uh, I'll just walk by somewhere and just see something. Like, uh, Harvest Thrift. Uh, one day I was just walking by, and it's my wallet. Nice. It's coach. Handmade. Can't open it. Do have my ID in there. You know what I mean? Handmade. Leather. But I was just walking by uh, the women's wallet section, I guess, or whatever. Spotted it almost immediately. It was like a dollar. And yeah, like that happens to me all the time. Like toys or shoes or just anything. Like I'll just be scanning over the general area of things and be like, ooh, what's that? look at it, investigate it, you know, I'm looking for a trademark date, I'm looking for Google image searches of it, if I think it's, you know, cool and I have absolutely no idea what it is, uh, yeah, Google image search is, like, your best friend ever, like, uh, I didn't even start using that until, like, the last year or so of thrifting, my ex kind of finally got me to use it, and then when I finally did use it, I was like, this is revolutionary, uh, it, it just makes everything so much easier. Like, I used to, when I would collect shoes, I would literally have to look up the year the shoe came out and just start guessing at things. Like, I, I would have to be like, all right, these are, you know, these are Kevin Durant's or these are LeBron's. And then I would just have to look the year up and just try and find them. Like, it was so tedious and so much effort put into that. And now I can just, like, walk into a store and just be, like, uh, let's see. Walk into a store and just be, like, uh, boom, what's this? What's this worth? You know what I mean? And it'll just pull it up and be, like, uh, it was like, 150 You know? And just pop it up. And it would tell me what it was if I wanted to, like, actually Google image, uh, Google search it for eBay listings and stuff. So... It would actually be helpful to me. But yeah, Google when search is easily the most helpful thing when thrifting. Like, I can't think of anything more helpful. Like, sometimes you don't have internet signal, though. Like, uh, you're out in Amish country. There are stores where you just don't have internet signal. You just got to go on, you know, you got to go on guts. You got to go on what you know. So, that's the thing. I have another uh, thing they invited. They invited me to, like, an interview thing for... Uh, like a security job so I'm already up here I'm probably gonna go hit that and hit another thrift store and then I have to work my way to Worcester you know to go to where I can shower so I gotta work my way that way but I'm gonna hit another thrift store while I'm out here it's always super weird too like uh, just being back where you've already been like, uh, the town, the rest stop where I woke up, I essentially, that was the town where I was living in the hotel for almost a year, and I lost all my money, and then I just took a job at that hotel, and that's where I started over for the second time with no money in 2019 or 2020. Okay, it's a little bit of a bore, but yeah, so, like, I was back in that town, and, you know, I knew everything about it, and I just sucks to be there sucks to be back where you were or like uh every time i gotta go let's just say through worcester i go past my aunt 
my aunt's house, I guess. It was my great grandpa's uh, twin brother's daughter who handled like the whole estate and everything. And they're kind of the people who are responsible for letting the house be sold for $100,000 under. So that's an issue. And they already hated me before. So I never go by or anything, but it's just weird to, you know, be poor and homeless and uh, have to go by your aunt, uh, who basically the last thing they ever did was completely screw you over. And they live on like a, I don't know what it is. It might only be 200 acres now, but it was, you know, 700 or whatever acres with multiple houses and lakes and barns. And yeah, I mean, that's just like their property, but yeah, like to go from, you know, on the one hand, you're homeless, and then on the other hand, like, you were screwed over by these people, and they're, you know, essentially millionaires, whether they have it in cash or not, and you have to go by there. I don't actually have to, like, I, I get within probably like a mile, mile and a half, like, I know exactly where it is, I could go there at any point, but I don't want to go there, I don't want to see the place, it just kind of would rub my failure in my face, and... If I could rub enough failure on my own face, I don't really need to push it in there anymore. So It's kind of hard. But yeah, I'm going to go to this Garter World thing. Uh, I'm going to go to the gym. Another thrift store at least. Find, find anything cool. I will throw it up. Again, hadn't really seen anything very cool. Nothing worth even like really throwing up. Like some really beat uh, Kyrie's. Like absolutely destroyed Kyrie's. In that thrift store. And then I have that. I have to be. Like. An hour. And a half at least away from here. By tomorrow morning. So I can go to. Uh, this like. The, uh, the person who I have an interview with on Friday. They wanted to show me the facility earlier. On Thursday. So I was like yeah I can be there Thursday on 10. So I'll be there. Go check that out. I think I have the first job. I'm not going to say for sure. You know, but it went good. Like I say, for me, interviews generally go really poorly. So it just went good. I, I It went well. I think it's, you know, I have money in my bank account. I'm not immediately about to starve to death. It's not 30 degrees yet, thankfully, even though there was that cold snap that scared me and kind of made me quit my job. Uh, so... Yeah, I'm gonna go to the gym here later. I made sure I ate something early this morning because I didn't want to be stressed out or put myself through. Because again, I just assume my interview might go bad. So I think it went fine. Maybe I get a call back on. I'm hoping no matter what, I can start some job by Monday. You know, because I need to see money rolling in uh, to continue life as it was. So. Yeah, I might put out a video later. I have no idea what it'd be. Maybe a Steam Deck size comparison with all the other devices that I have in the car. I might do that. So, but everyone has a good day. Uh, yeah. If anyone ever sees this and you're ever going through a hard time, just know that uh, you know, even if you don't think anyone cares, if you have anyone in your life. They probably care. They probably they probably care. You know what I mean? Like if you're not paying them to be around, then they probably care about you to some degree. So and even if you have nobody that cares about you, you just have to try and give yourself that little bit of extra love, you know, that you don't get. You just have to try and do better for yourself. And want more for yourself than uh, other people might want to give you. So, if you do that, maybe you'll find success. Maybe you'll be happy. You know, I have yet to find it for myself, but, uh, it's a long road. Like, uh, like, even just part of me, like, every time I get real low, and I'd be like, oh, I just want to give up, or I want to, you know, go to that, that other place, you know, uh, it's kind of stupid to think about, but, like, imagine you turn 40 years old, like, you know, imagine if you went through with it, 
and that was the end of everything. Like there's no nothing past that. But then imagine there's another, you know, coexisting like time frame that if you would just continue on the road, even though it might be a hard road, that in five years and ten years, you might strike on something so big that it changes everything for you, for your family, whether they care about you, whether they're with you or not. You know what I mean? Like, though my sister might not want to uh, really talk to me or be my friend or do anything with me because she was my cousins and they all kind of hate me. Even though that might be the fact, and even though my uncle is like a piece of crap that owes me at least $1,500, um, I think if I had the money, like if I had tens of millions of dollars, uh, you know, a hundred million dollars, I'd happily, like, even though my sister barely knows me whatsoever, you know what I mean, I'll always remember holding her as a, as a child, and, uh, yeah, like, if I could, I would give her five million dollars, like, I don't know, I might put some levels of stipulation upon it, just because our family has really bad addiction issues and impulse issues, and my mom was doing cocaine when she had uh, her at least cocaine so she's definitely got these issues the same bipolar and things that I have so I might put stipulations on it not that it ever really matters but it might be something like uh, you know a hundred grand a year or something which is still probably too much or like uh, until you're a certain age you don't get so much of it I'm not too sure but again these are all like theoretical things even my uncle who I hate that you know owes me money and done all these things to me If he's still an alcoholic, I probably wouldn't give him money. But if he wasn't an alcoholic, which I probably wouldn't even be able to tell because some people are really good at hiding things like that. Um, I'm usually pretty good at seeing it, but sometimes you just can't, you know. So, well, on him, I used to be able to see it. He was a really mean drunk and everything. But even though he was a complete asshole to me, like, most of my life, I'd still probably give him some money. Uh, my cousins that I stay with, I'd probably still probably give them some money, like... I, I don't know. Like, even though these people have been, like, mean to me and hard to me or wronged me in many ways, like, I still probably would do something for them because nobody else will, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, nobody nobody cares about anyone. I feel like in a lot of ways it's kind of, like, uh, just hard. Like, I, I wish I could give back in some way, but I definitely I have nothing to give, you know? I wish there was better homelessness programs. I wish there was better drug programs if there were things like that my mom potentially would be still alive but you know we're talking about like 2004 you know the opioid crisis type thing so yeah I, don't know, I just wish there was better support for things I wish there was better protections for people so that people wouldn't have to be on the street housing crisis is like a really huge thing that I don't think a lot of people think about too much but Let's say you have a house or an apartment, or just it doesn't really matter. Preferably an apartment that you can have space from other people and you can, you know, learn an existence in privacy, or something like that. But then you could potentially walk to somewhere and work, and that would be fine. You know, you could make that work. But if you don't have anywhere to live, it just it makes working very difficult. Like, uh, yeah, like if I was to get this job around here. The closest gym is nine miles, uh, so I'd have to go there to shower. I probably would only do it every other day, depending on how close it was to the Walmart. I couldn't really tell. Um, and then I'd have to sleep at the Walmart for, it was again, it was nine miles. But I think there's slightly different directions. So, and then I have to be back at this place every day, you know. And it, it's just very difficult to, to prosper. And you got weather, you got people being assholes. There's just so many things that really add to, you know, the hardship of it. So, this has been an absolutely terrible rambling video from me. But, uh, maybe in five years I'll look back on it and I'll be entertained by this. By my honesty. Yeah. I don't know. Hope everyone has a good day. See you guys.